Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Best of the West, the place for all things LCS and LEC. It has been too damn long. I meant to record so long ago, like after the regular season for summer finished, but I better late than never. Motivation is really a bitch, isn't it? You know, it's just really hard to get motivated for some things. That's why I'm yet again doing this last minute. But hey, at least we have good lighting this time, am I right? Um... So, yeah, let's just jump right into it because you're not here to me to listen to me complain about motivation and how hard it is to be motivated. You're here for me to talk about our Western League. So let's start with LEC because playoffs has already started. Um, I, I'm going to be honest, blatantly, as an American, as you can tell by my accent, I'm from North America. Uh, I'm... And more focused around. Excuse me. Uh, I am more focused around LCS, but it's actually really good that we're doing this the week after playoffs has started and doing a preview for LCS because there are some serious week one impressions. And guys, let's be real, you might be doomed at Worlds. And the reason why is that G2 MDK series. Um, G2 just looked really bad. Like, really bad. Their early game continued to suck, which was a known problem already. Like, we already knew their early game was bad. Um, I found this stat from... I don't remember who it was on Twitter, but I wrote down notes here. How in the last seven games of the summer split in like those playoffs, those two playoff series, um, they had one gold lead out of those last seven, and it was a gold lead of eight hundred and sixty-six in uh, BDS game one, and it was actually the game that they lost, which is kind of crazy. So, um. Game four against BDS, oddly enough, so first and last of the series, the last game was the only one without a major gold deficit. Uh, they were only behind 399 gold, which is like basically a solo kill. Um, so, yeah. It's not even a kill with an assist. That's not even like a 2v2 kill. But that means five of the seven games were major gold deficits. And not just Major, because I believe Major is considered just 1k behind. I don't know what's going on with the sun right now. Um, I'm recording this at 5. Um, but it was 2k behind, so I have it in order. So I have the ahead 866, and I'm going to skip game 4. So game 2 behind 4.6k, game 3 behind 2.6k, we go to the Fnatic games behind 2.1, 2.7, and 6.6. They were behind 6,600 gold. And Fnatic managed to throw it. Because Fnatic is just a special level of bad. And this is probably going to be our number two seed. Or LEC's number two seed. Um, which is insane. So, we really need to th think about this going forward though. Like... If this is any Asian team, has any of those gold leads, even Team Liquid and, S and Cloud9 could confidently close out those games. And we know G2 can lose to NA, as we sadly saw last year. Um, <coughs> um, so we saw that, and they really need to fix that. Um, so, Caps performed very poorly too um there was the anti-flashing that we all were just so mad at we lost our minds and then there was a quirky game he had that was pretty bad i was watching dom's uh co-stream highlights because i don't have all the time in the world to like watch these and he was like oh caps ended caps just ended where he was playing quirky So, yeah, 
Uh, Caps has to perform if G2 wants to do good, though. I'm, like, starting to understand the one-player region memes, because it's not just a one-team region. It might be a one-player region. Because if Caps does not play at a high level, if he's not in form, EU is so mega-doomed at Worlds. Um, MDK also somehow managed to lose Game 3, no clue how. And my takeaway is, if this is their level of play at Worlds 2... They're going to lose to a new minor region. Like, they're going to lose to, like, VCS, probably. Which is technically not a minor region. It's considered emerging because two seasons shit, but you get my point. But, maybe all hope isn't lost. Because here's the G2 Hopium Copium mix. The mixed take of Copium and Hopium. Because there is hope here. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, the copium is that this was a wake-up call for G2, <clears throat> and they know they need to fix their problems. This might, you know, ignite a fire under their ass and force them to be informed for Worlds. And w the things they need in Worlds is obviously, like I said, Caps needs to be in top form, or else we're screwed. BB's laning phase needs to be in good condition. Uh, the team needs to improve their early game massively. And the copium is, oh... Scrims at Worlds, Scrims at Worlds, they'll do so much better when they're scrimming Asian teams, which is honestly major cope to me, but um, the team, there is hope that they can improve their early game and still maintain and if not solidify their mid-game uh, strengths and macro strengths, which is obviously something they have in Europe. Um... And this roster is a possibility of greatness. This is a hopium. Like, we saw them win 3-0 against TES. And this was the first time an LEC team, um, G2 won uh, best of five against LPL or LCK since Perks left. Because before that, before MSI, we could not win one. We couldn't. Um, and they can restore the confidence we have this weekend with the level of performance they have, which is a perfect segue into this weekend's matches and expectations. Um, so the first one is BDS versus SK, which I think is way more exciting. I think this could be a very close match. Um, this could go to silver scrapes. I'd be a little bit surprised if it didn't, but it is very possible, depending on what we see from the first two or three games, that it doesn't go to five. So, my my prediction is honestly um, BDS. I do predict them to win 3-2 or 3-1, but my heart says SK. Um, yeah, it, it's really hard. I want to believe in SK and see them in Munich. Um, so, yeah, that's my hope. Um, and then there's G2 versus GX on Sunday. And G2 better stomp them. They should. Um, if we see this, a similar level of performance, then G2 can certainly take a game off of them. But I'd be surprised if we see the same level of performance. Um, so I think it's going to be a G2 3-0, and I think the level of play and their early game is, like I said earlier, going to help restore confidence in the G2 army. Um, so that's about it for LEC. And now LCS playoffs start. Um, this is going to be really interesting with a new format this year. Because um, it's similar to the old summer playoffs where it was 8 teams. Uh, 8 out of the 10. Um, because the top 2 teams have a first round bye. And these top 2 teams, Team Liquid and Cloud9, only need to win 1 best of 5 to make it to Worlds. People don't really like that. But I do really like the lower bracket sort of format, <clears throat> personally speaking. Um, excuse the voice crack. Personally speaking, I like it because I could. We could see some like deep runs, similar to like how we saw LNG go all the way from like first round of playoffs to top four, um, and I think twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two. So it. You know, that long extended series could give us that kind of hype. But let's start with the series we have um, this weekend. 
Dig versus 100 and Fly versus NRG. I think most people agree on the second series that Fly is going to confidently win. It should be a 3-0. And then I think Dig versus 100 Thieves, I'm predicting 100 Thieves 3-1. It is possible Dig season comes back with more precipitation, you know, like a rain season, and it could go 3-2. Um, but it's hard for me to believe that Dignitas is going to be better than 100 Thieves because they have the current reigning MVP in Quid, and their top side, I still think, really has the ability to step up, and with Tomo being in the bot lane, he just won Player of the Week. He's not a liability like Meech was. Um, there's also that storyline there, because Tomo used to be on Dignitas. He came up from Academy to replace Spawn when... Um, was it Spawn or was it Prismal? I, but yeah, he came up from Academy when I believe it was Spawn was underperforming. So there's sort of that revenge arc. Of, they didn't let him go. He's like, I'm going to show them. Um, and then that leads us to next week with the loser's bracket match of Dig versus NRG. Um, I think Dig will win that. Probably the reverse of the loss, 3-1. Um, but maybe 3 up because... I just don't see energy winning. I, I've been really down on energy since spring. They have improved, I believe, uh, since. Um, but, yeah, I've just really lost confidence in energy. Uh, and then we go 100 Thieves versus Team Liquid. Team Liquid's obviously going to stomp them. But let's be real. The top three teams are, like, in their own league. And TL... Is like, so, you know, we have the top three. TL is like the beginning of my hairline. Then there's C9, which is like around my chin. And then there's FlyQuest. Uh, I think FlyQuest is not, if this is still FlyQuest, I feel like four and five are like around here. So I don't think FlyQuest is invincible, but it's almost certain that these are our top three teams. Um, so yeah, Teal's gonna definitely smash the Thieves. Clean 3-0. It's gonna impress everyone. They're gonna be like, oh my god, we're gonna be great at Worlds. And they are gonna be our hope at Worlds. Um, I'm gonna get to that in a later video, because I'm probably gonna see you guys in two or three weeks. And then we have the last match of next weekend, um, which is FlyQuest versus Cloud9. Um, and I expect Cloud9 to win, but I've had this cut for like a week straight, so forgive me. Um, but it, I do expect them to win, but I do think it could be really close. I could see this going to five games, honestly. Um, I think FlyQuest is going to seriously put up a fight. They will not go quietly into the night. They will lose kicking and screaming trying to defend their nexus when c9 kills their third nexus um and like i said earlier it feels like <coughs> it feels like they are in a caliber of their own so they are expected finalists the expected finalists are team liquid clown nine and fly quest in that order um so yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm probably not going to do much playoffs coverage, but I will see you guys probably after both, and we will talk about Worlds and ranking all the Western players that we see go. Um, that's about it. See ya.